Hi everyone. Welcome to my video series on pet portraits. Uh, my name is Lindsay Anderson. I have been a visual art teacher for 11 years and I am very much looking forward to uh, teaching you a little bit about a variety of styles and techniques to create portraits of our furry friends. Hello, hello. Time for session four. This one is my absolute favorite because it's my favorite medium to work with, watercolor. All right, watercolor can be extremely intimidating because it has a mind of its own. It is a difficult medium to work with. It takes practice. Um, it probably will not turn out the way you want it to the first time you use it. If you've used watercolor in the past, great. Hopefully you've taken some things um, and kind of stored that away and uh, remember what it's like. And um, I'm going to show you my method. And it's actually very much like colored pencil or graphite in regards to layering, paying attention to the colors that you see, the areas of color, the shapes of color. Um, you will start kind of loose and then you will tighten things up and get more detailed as the layers progress. Um, you have two options when you are doing a watercolor painting. You can do something that is very tight and realistic where the details are you know, on point or you can do something that's very loose and flowy and a little bit more stylized. Sometimes you can use different colors and make it look more abstract. The possibilities are endless and either way is gonna be beautiful. Um, I'm gonna show you both. I'm gonna show you a loose and watery start um, and then I'm gonna show you how to refine some of those details. So I'm gonna show you both ways today. This is watercolor paper and my third drawing, technically third drawing of my dog. And you're welcome to use different images for each one of these if you want to. Yeah, it's totally up to you. I would just, I, you know, use the same one just for ease. Uh, but you will probably be starting off with a very light drawing. See how you can barely see it. I'm the only one that can see this because pencil will show through a little bit of watercolor because watercolor is a transparent medium, meaning you can see through it. So you really don't want your drawing to be very dark to start off with. You want it to be very, very light. Okay, talk a little bit about supplies for a second. You will need a water cup, a watercolor paintbrush. Watercolor paintbrushes are different than uh, acrylic paint brushes because they are rounded at the tip um, rather than square. This is, this is well, square and, and kind of diagonal, but this is more of an acrylic paintbrush than this is a watercolor paintbrush. You will want a larger watercolor paintbrush to work the uh, larger areas of color, and then you'll want a smaller watercolor paintbrush with a, with a tinier tip to get those details. I also love these. If you've ever seen one of these, this is kind of cool. It is, they're super cheap. You just open it up, you put some water in this, and then you actually squeeze it into the brush tip. So this is kind of nice for details too. Another thing I often recommend my students, um, obviously, you know, basic watercolors are going to do the job. They're absolutely going to do the trick, but I also sometimes like to recommend these. If you want to achieve some really cool detail, these are watercolor brush pens. Ask for it for Christmas. It's a good gift. All right, let's jump onto my other view so we can start this watercolor painting. All right, we are going to start off with a watercolor technique called a wash. Washes are great for blocking in large areas of color. And in order to do that, you actually wanna get your brush wet first. Um, I don't have enough room on my screen to show you uh, my water cup, but my water cup and brush are over here. You will want to have a paper towel available just to dab off some of that excess water. And then my watercolors are over here to the side as well. Um, first things first, obviously I have my, my image up on my screen, so I'm going to take a look and I'm going to see 
you know, what area do I want to start with? And just like before, I will probably start with some of my darker areas just because I know I can always layer, um, well, you can layer details on top of a darker area, but I just always start with darker areas because anything that's light, you really want to kind of leave it alone uh, for the most part until you start to add some of those details. So let's just start in here with only water. I am only putting water on my paper because right now I just want to create a wash of a darker fur color, which I think is mostly black and gray in here. So I have some water on my paper. Now I'm going to go into my black. Uh oh, I need to get some more black over here. I think my son took it and uh, was painting his own little, little pet. So, yep, I've got some brown and green in here. I will be right back. So one cool thing about watercolor, since we had a little little mess up, when you're using watercolor paper, the, the, the wetness will hang out for a while. It's not gonna dry immediately. So if you have any little hiccups, you can always use your paper towel and sort of dab your paper and it will pull up some of that paint. Um, so that's just a little trick. It's kind of, it's called pulling off um, your paper. So let me get some black like I need. I'm gonna put some water down again because I want it to be transparent. I want it to be flowy. The, the idea of watercolor is that it looks like watery paint. Um, so here we go. If you end up with a little bit too much paint on your brush, just dab it off and then go back in and push the paint around that watery area. You really don't wanna go out of the watery area because then it will be more of a dry brush technique and it'll be crisper on your page. But right now, we just really want it to be, you know, a transparent, watery block of color. This is a wash. If you wanna add darker areas, I'm gonna take a look at my picture over here. I see that my dog has some darker black areas right around uh, the little eyebrow area and in here notice I'm kind of leaving the middle area alone because there are highlights in there so I'm gonna dab off a little bit of that and then I'm gonna take some more water and start blocking in other areas while this first layer starts to dry and push the paint around you really have to, I mean, it has a mind of its own in that it's gonna blur and it's gonna mix with any wet surface of your paper. So you have to just be aware that um, that can happen. But you can always push paint around. I think that's the coolest part about watercolor. So I'm gonna make another block of water and I'm gonna start putting a little bit more watercolor paint in here and we're about to have a visitor. Mommy, I got flowers! Oh, he's Mommy. bringing me a flower. All right, so that was really sweet. My son just brought me a flower while I'm working. <laughs> okay, so anyway, if you want to push watercolor paint around the paper, you can, you can use just a water-filled brush to do that, um, especially if you feel like there's too much paint for some reason, like maybe it's too dark or, um, you know, you just have a little bit too much paint on your paper, you can push it around with just a water-filled brush. Okay, so let's bring in a little bit of another color. So you probably have a yellow and a brown. Um, you can actually mix watercolor paint in the, the empty side of your palette. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start again with just a little bit of water, and then I'm gonna dip into that mixed color and Again, just create a wash, but I don't wanna make it too dark because this is a light area of the fur, so you don't wanna add too much paint. Now, look at this. So why is this happening? This is happening because this area was still wet 
when I added the area right next to it. That is definitely something to think about. If you don't want your colors to bleed into one another, you have to let one section dry before you go into painting a section that butts right up next to it. Over here, it's not a really big deal because I'm gonna be doing some more black, but for example, the eye, like the details, um, and any changes in fur color, you wanna make sure that your first block of color is dry before you start going into that. So I kind of did that on purpose just so you could see it. Sometimes it's way more drastic than what has happened here. This doesn't really bother me because I think that looks really pretty. Um, it's definitely a watercolor technique um, or I guess the watercolor style. Um, okay, so let's switch over to time-lapse mode again. I'm gonna work on this a little bit, just blocking in these larger areas of color and um, using the wash technique and then I'm gonna let it dry and then we'll come back and we'll start adding some details. All right, so just a little recap of what I did. Um, I started very loose and flowy with this because I think it's a really nice watercolor technique. And once you, you know, once you do that and you've got lots of water on your paper, you'll start to see these areas where it look like looks like ink blotches. Um, that's a really great watercolor technique, and it's definitely characteristic of the style. Um, so you could continue with this method and then add very little details. Um, you could even add something really cool in the background, maybe like a, a fun washy uh, gradient type color. Like let's just try something like maybe like a blue, just lay some of that in there. Maybe have some forced drips. Uh, do it like a wet and wet technique with two colors. That's what a wet and wet technique is when you add um, one color to another color so that could be a really fun background idea for you uh, just be really careful when you are doing the background you have to make sure not to touch any wet areas of the of the subject of the dog because it will bleed into the background unless you really like that technique or I guess the look of that um, which is quite possible um, the next step for me is to let this dry and you're gonna to wanna to get up and walk away from it just so you're not tempted to, to start adding anything. Uh, let it completely dry because you have your first wash layer. I didn't add any details in here because I really wanna make sure that everything is dry around it so it doesn't bleed. Um, and then we will come back once it is dry and I'll start to show you how to add some of those more realistic details um, in the fur and in the eyes and maybe even the background. We'll do some other things in the background. I'll show you other, a couple other techniques too to add finishing touches and just some more stylized options. Okay, I think mine is dry enough that we can start working on some details in here. And the first big detail I wanna start attacking, I guess, is um, the eyes. So I'm actually switching over to one of my watercolor brushes that actually has the water inside of it just to just to play around with it and because it has a really nice uh, thin tip when you're doing details you really don't want to have a thick tip on your brush you want to have a nice pointed tip so that you can get those details uh, where they are supposed to go so right now I actually am not gonna I'm not gonna use the wash technique I'm not gonna put water down on the paper first I'm gonna go right in with what's called a dry brush technique for this and um, just add bits of of paint directly to the dry paper so you have to be very careful and pay attention to what your image looks like I see a black rim around the eye, so I'm gonna start with that. And then I also see some highlights, some major highlights in the eye. So like I said before, um, if, if you want something to be bright white, actually I don't know if I said it before, but I'll say it right now. If you want something to be bright white with watercolor, there is no such thing as white watercolor paint. You actually have to leave your paper alone to achieve that effect. 
So I'm leaving those highlighted areas alone and they're a little, they're a little off, but that's okay. And I'm just painting fairly lightly the areas that I see. So now I need to kind of let that part dry because if I'm gonna add brown down here, which is what I see in my dog's eye, I have to let this part dry because if I don't, then um, the brown's just gonna bleed right into the black. So I'm gonna let that dry and I'm gonna move over to the other eye and I'm gonna try to find the dark black areas in that eye. And there's some in here. If you have too much paint on your brush, dab it off on your paper towel and just go right back in without adding any paint to your brush and you can push that paint around. Remember that is possible. Um, you can also go in with just water on your brush and create like a, a gradual change in value. Okay, so that's where I see the black on this particular eye. So I'm gonna let that dry. And then I think this might, might be dry enough that I can start adding some brown into that. So I am going to dip into my brown and add brown to this eye. And what's a, a, if you have the photo on your phone or on your computer, it's a good idea to zoom in to that eye so you can really see what you're supposed to be, what you're supposed to be painting. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna just lay this in. This might not be dry enough, but I'm gonna try it anyway. But I also am noticing that my brown is a little bit too dark. He almost has like a, oops, he almost has like a yellow ring. So I'm gonna dab a little bit of that up and then I'm gonna go back in with some yellow. Oops. And add some yellow in here if it will work for me. There we go. That's a little bit more what the color looks like. Okay letting things dry remember it's all about layers and we'll start adding in some details elsewhere okay with your thin brush same as the graphite drawing the colored pencil drawing we want to achieve the look of fur so we need to pay attention to the detailed lines that we're going to add um, as a as a dry brush technique where your paper is dry even if even if there's paint underneath it if your paper's dry and your brush is wet it's actually called a dry brush kind of doesn't make a whole lot of sense why it's called a dry brush when your brush is wet, but that is the case. Um, so I'm just gonna start going into some of these darker areas and just like I did with my pencil and my colored pencil, I'm gonna follow the direction of the fur. I'm gonna lay some of these details in. It doesn't have to be everywhere for you to achieve the look you're, you're going for. So pick out some areas that you know you want to have some details in. If you're doing the, the more loose and flowy method, you may not even want to add as much detail as I'm going to uh, because you know that's the beauty of it. It's just kind of loose and um, not entirely realistic. You could take this as tight and as realistic as you want to, even with a loose flowy background, or I guess first layer, um, you can do that. I am going to hop over again to time-lapse mode and fill some of these details in and then jump back in with you to move forward. So just a few things to remember um, as you're working in watercolor, you start with washes um, to block in large areas of color. Please make sure that you are letting that layer dry before you want to add any types of crisp details on top of it. Um, there's one more technique that I wanna show you that's just kind of fun to do at the end. Just make sure you're happy with your with your drawing, and I could work on this for a lot longer, um, but I'm not going to right now. 
um, to add details, but you can see I, I really got crisp in, in the area of the eye and then I added some fur details and I could continue to do that. Um, as I go. But one technique that I always like to add toward the end is called the splatter technique. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tap my watercolor brush with a little bit of paint on it. I'm gonna tap it right on my finger. And I'm just gonna add a few splatters. Um, sometimes they can go a little crazy, so you might wanna dab some of them up. But like what's really nice is when they're in the background. Um, you can also do some forced drips. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just tilt my painting and I'm going to add just water and kind of pull down uh, to the bottom of the paper and add more water, maybe even a little bit of paint and force that drip to happen. You can really have fun with force drips. I use them all the time. Um, that does give it a, a bit more stylized abstract look because obviously, um, you know, you're not as tight and realistic with with four strips, but they're really nice. They're a nice addition. Like I said, I could go in here and add even more detail. Um, you can sort of stop right around the neck area. You don't have to come all the way down to the bottom of the paper. If you want, you can add the collar in, um, or you can leave it out. You're the artist, you get to choose. I'm probably gonna leave it out just because. And I think that is all. As far as watercolor goes, enjoy it though. It is very difficult. Like I said, it has a mind of its own. You really have to practice. Um, it might even be a good idea to have a piece of scrap paper over on the side just so you can see how much paint is actually on your brush and what you're gonna be putting onto your paper. And then always have your paper towel uh, for any little mess ups. Um, super, super fun technique. It is my absolute favorite. I've been doing watercolor pet portraits for a long time and um, there's gonna be a slide that shows you some of my my paintings that have been commissioned. All right, hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.